Hi, welcome back to Cybersecurity for Everyone. I'm Dr. Charles Harry. In our last episode, we talked about threat actors. And just to review, threat actors exploit vulnerabilities. And those threat actors act either alone or as part of a collective or a broader organization. They leverage their skill and resources to achieve a specific end effect. And finally, they're motivated by different things. So not all threat actors are the same. So in this episode, I want to talk about the first one of those groups, hobbyists. So let's talk about the first one of these groups, hobbyists. Who are they? Well, they tend to be low skilled. If you're acting alone and you don't have a lot of financial resources and or a lot of formal training, you're not going to have the top flight skills necessary to pull off the most complicated cyber operation. They tend to be lightly resourced, especially if you, if you think of the typical example that's given by a hacker, maybe a, a brilliant person living in their parents' basement. Well, if they're living in their parents' basement, they probably don't have a lot of money. They don't have a lot of money, they may not be able to acquire the software or the hardware for them to reverse engineer and to pull off some of the more complicated cyber operations. They tend to use off-the-shelf tools that have usually been developed by other individuals. And they're likely to engage in some activities that demonstrate some capability to increase their reputation. We oftentimes call these folks script kitties. So let's talk a little bit about their motives. So fundamentally, hobbyists are curious about how technology works and where the vulnerabilities lie. These are individuals who act alone, but they oftentimes cross the line and they violate confidentiality or the integrity of data sets or they could potentially impact access to a device or service itself. So fundamentally, hobbyists are curious about how technology works, and oftentimes they'll exploit a particular system or service to demonstrate their capability and to improve their reputation. But these activities can be illegal, and it's important to remember that. So just because you're curious, doesn't mean that you should be doing that activity. You can easily cross the line. So let's talk a little bit about the tools that hobbyists might use. Well, in penetration testing, in cybersecurity industry, there's a particular build of Linux called Kali. And in Kali, there are a variety of different utilities and other tools that are helpful in doing things like reconnaissance. Now we'll talk more about reconnaissance in another episode, but the ability to actually search your target and identify a variety of pieces of information that help you identify where the weaknesses are is fundamentally important. And hobbyists are able to leverage utilities that have been built by other people to conduct this type of reconnaissance. There are tools for exploitation, the ability to identify the vulnerability and to throw a particular piece of code at it in order for you to exploit that vulnerability. All of these things are found in Kali Linux. There are tools for delivery that once I've identified what that particular exploit code should be, the ability for me to throw it at a particular target is a means of delivery. Now again, we'll talk more about reconnaissance, exploitation, and delivery in future episodes. So in this particular Kali Linux build, you can see a variety of open source free tools that hobbyists can leverage in order to take advantage of weakly defended systems. So what kind of attacks do we actually see coming from hobbyists? Well, we see a range of different low level type attacks. These include things like defacing of a website, which is just simply graffiti on the website. The ability to execute a denial of service attack. So the ability to throw enough packets at a particular target so that it is unable to respond. 
you're denying service of that particular application server. A SQL injection attack where you're just modifying the URL and tricking the database behind that website to reveal more information than it intended. It could involve guessing passwords, doing what we call brute force attacks. Finally, even Google hacking. If you know how to use the lexicon in Google good enough, you may be able to identify information that was not intended to be made public. That could be really quite useful when you want to access a particular system. So one good example of a hobbyist attack comes from Budapest in Hungary in 2017. And in 2017, the Budapest Transport Authority had launched a new online ticketing system. There were many, many security flaws, including an admin account password that was set up as admin admin. And an 18-year-old hobbyist was able to manipulate the website very, very easily to purchase a $36 ticket for 20 cents. Now, that particular hobbyist was motivated by curiosity, identified a particular vulnerability, and then notified the appropriate authorities. The problem was he crossed the line and it was arrested and prosecuted. So even though this particular hobbyist, this particular threat actor, really did not have malicious intent, really thought that they were doing the right thing by publicly exposing a vulnerability, they did cross the line. And so therefore they were arrested and prosecuted. So hobbyists really are opportunistic targeters. They look for where vulnerabilities might lie. They do broad-based scanning of the internet. They identify where a particular vulnerability might lie and then they execute on it. So they're opportunistic. And in fact, if we take a look at data just over a couple of years, so in this particular case, we're looking at a data set from 2014 to 2018, the vast, vast majority of the attacks that we see being conducted by hobbyists are against professional services. These include things like dentist office or accountants. So they tend to be weakly defended networks. And so hobbyists take advantage of those weakly defended networks to execute some sort of effect. So what are some of the takeaways from this module? Well, first of all, hobbyists tend to be low skilled and lightly resourced threat actors. They are motivated primarily by curiosity and by a desire to build a reputation and they tend to leverage established tools and tactics. So these threat actors are not building their own custom software. They're not reverse engineering the really complicated systems. They're taking advantage of what has already been done. In our next episode, we'll talk about criminal actors and the threat they represent. I hope to see you next time.